Hello, my name is Jason Klingler with Mecklenburg County Stormwater Services. Today I'm going to talk to you about the soil erosion and sedimentation process. We want you to be able to understand the difference between erosion, sediment, and sedimentation. First off, erosion is the dislodging of soil particles. Sediment transport is the transportation of those soil particles. Sedimentation is the deposition of those eroded and transported soil particles. So just to recap, erosion is the dislodging of the soil particles, sediment transport is the transportation of the soil particles, and sedimentation is the deposition of the soil particles. A little bit more about erosion. Erosion is a process that begins with particle movement due to wind energy or the impacts of raindrops. Raindrops have enough erosive force to dislodge soils. Overland flow of water moves dislodged soil particles, creating rills or gullies. In this picture, you can see an example of erosion. This storm has dumped a lot of water very fast, and you have erosion cutting across the construction entrance of a single family lot. This is the same picture, and you can see more erosion as it cuts across the construction lot and starts to deposit sediment out into the road. Here's the last picture of that single family lot where we have the erosion, we have the sediment transport, and we have the deposition of the sediment called sedimentation out into the road. Sediment is the dislodged soil particles which can be transported via wind or water. We don't talk a whole lot about wind, but wind is another erosive force that we have to contend with on our construction sites. Here's an example of sediment that has been deposited around a traffic cone. The third step in the process, sedimentation, is an accumulation of dislodged soil particles and low points where the flow of water slows down. Sediment settles out when you have reduced water velocities that no longer have enough energy to carry the particles. They, that's typically a low spot in a street, a low spot in a stream, or a slowing of the water flow where those sediment particles can settle out from the water. Factors that influence erosion. Soil type. Silt is extremely susceptible to erosion. Clay is moderately susceptible to erosion. And sand typically is low susceptibility to erosion, but can provide high and extremely susceptibility to erosion based on site conditions. Vegetative cover, one of the biggest factors that influence erosion. It reduces the erosive force of raindrops. The roots hold that soil together. As the raindrop come da comes down or the water flows over overland flow, those roots help to hold the soil particles together. Topography. Slope length and steepness greatly influence the volume and velocity of surface runoff. The longer slopes, the steeper slopes are potentially factors that you have to look into at your site when you are looking at factors that influence erosion. Some more factors that influence erosion. Climate. Erosion risks are higher during times when rainfall prediction is frequent, intense, or lengthy. Typical seasonal rainfall in the Charlotte area is as follows. Winter is frequent. Spring is frequent, intense, or lengthy. The summer is infrequent, but intense. And you start to have that hurricane influence. The summer is also where we have those very intense storms where you can get several inches in a very short span of time. And these have to be considered when you're doing your erosion control during the summer months. And in the fall, we start to get, to get into that frequent pattern where we have a heavier in hurricane influence. Again, this is where doing your NPDES logbooks can really come in and save your site. Without these logbooks documenting how much rainfall you may get in a hurricane event, you may be left with an issue where you have basins blow out or other issues on site where sediment has potentially impacted wetlands or streams and without the documentation showing that the rain event has eclipsed the design criteria, you, you may be left with a tough issue such as an NOV or a notice of violation with a penalty.
So it's imperative in these situations of hurricanes that you do your NPDES logbooks. How do we control erosion? Well, minimize disturbed areas, 20 acres max, unless additional paperwork is submitted and approved. When we talk about additional paperwork, we're looking at a cut fill analysis. <clears throat> Establish ground cover within 14 days. Some areas require seven days. Know which applies to your site. If you're working in cer certain watersheds and jurisdictions, such as the town of Matthew, enhanced erosion control is a requirement and the required seven-day stabilization time frames come into play. Control your flows. You control where the water goes. Don't let the water control where it wants to go. Phase grading, clear, stabilize, and move on. Don't mass clear a 100-acre site all at once, leaving so many areas exposed. Phase grade it, clear it, stabilize, and then move on to another area to cut down and grub. Inspect and maintain BMPs. It's cheaper to clean closer to the source. It's easier to clean out from behind a wattle or a rock check dam than getting a long boom track hoe down to clean out your BMP or your sediment basin. So inspect and maintain BMPs and clean them out closest to the source if possible. And stabilization, stabilization. You're going to hear that time and time again. Your best form of erosion control is stabilization. How do we control sedimentation? How do we control where those sediment particles are deposited? Well, let's reduce the erosion potential. Reduce flow velocity. Slow that water down. Capture sediment near the source. Inspect and maintain all BMPs in your site. Again, you tell the water where you want it to go. And stabilization. Erosion and sediment problems caused by grading operations. We all know that when you go out and grade a site, soils are exposed from the removal of vegetative ground covers. You're going to change the drainage area potentially of a site, and you're going to increase the flow of water through and over and on that site. Some of the things we look for when we get erosion on site are the three steps in the erosion process. We get rivulets. We're not too worried about that. These commonly occur after a small rain. Then we have rills. Rills are generally come up when you have longer duration rains, more intense rains. And then gullies. Gullies are what we want to avoid. Should you get a gully on the backside of a basin or an area holding water, this could potentially cause a disaster if this blows out or if this sediment gets into a protected area such as a wetland, buffer, or a stream. Here are some examples of gullies that we want to prevent from happening. In this picture, you can see a big wash coming from the construction site running right out onto the road. No controls in place and sediment is just going where it wants to go. Control the water and you can control the sediment. Here's a large gully that is formed around the foundation of a house. Again, control the water where you want it to go. Slow the water as it flows and you slow the erosion potential. And if nothing else out of my presentation, stabilization. Please understand that stabilization is the best form of erosion control.